Hello everyone. Uh, over the past few weeks, I've been getting a lot of messages from our community members asking me to backtest other strategies by Mr. Maheshendra Kautik. So as requested, uh, we're going to be looking at one of MCK's gems, the homogeneous ETF swing trading strategy. This strategy is incredibly simple on the surface, but surprisingly deep, right? Once you start unpacking it, it's a strategy that kind of combines timeless market wisdom from the Japanese rice trader who lived centuries ago and then the modern practicality of Mr. MCK. Uh, now, this is not just a theory video. I've actually taken the strategy, coded it up in Python and backtested it across multiple, uh, you know, and most popular liquid ETFs that are listed on the NSC using my own AI based backtesting framework. In this video, I'll take you through what the strategy is, why it works, how I tested it, and then most importantly, how it performed. So sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Vivek and I'm a financially independent algo trader. This channel is all about building a community of algo traders. We discuss everything about algo trading using Python, building and practicing trading strategies, market updates, and much more. Always do your own research and consult with a qualified financial tax and legal professional before making any financial decision. Let's start from the, the very beginning, the origins of this strategy. Uh, meet Homa Munehisa, a legendary Japanese rice trader from the 1700s. Homa is, is often called the father of candlestick charting. He, he noticed something fascinating during his time you know, trading rice contracts, that markets move not just because of supply and demand, but because of human emotion. Fear, greed, hope, hesitation, these forces repeat over and over, creating patterns that the traders can learn to read. That's how the, the candlestick patterns were born. Now, fast forward a few hundred years uh, to the YouTube era and then enter Mr. Mahesh in the Kaushik. Mr. Mahesh is one of those rare financial educators who cuts through the noise. Uh, his YouTube channel, I'm sure most of you have seen this, is a gold mine for retail traders, packed with very simple but very practical, no-nonsense strategies that are built on logic, experience, and deep backtesting. What I really respect about him is that he doesn't sell hype. His strategies are low-risk, backed by reasoning, and he shares them completely free. So when you blend the timeless wisdom of Homa with the practical genius of Mr. Mahesh Chandra Kaushik, you get what I like to call the homogeneous strategy. The idea behind the strategy is refreshingly simple. Um, it is built on the belief that ETFs, which is exchange traded funds, being baskets of stocks tend to go up over time. I mean, why is that? Right? This is primarily because the ETFs uh, you know, don't track individual stocks, rather track broad indices or sectors or themes. The underperformers get replaced by stronger companies and economies, despite their ups and downs, have a natural upward drift. So if we accept that the ETFs generally rise in the long run, then temporary dips become buying opportunities. And that's exactly what the, the edge of the strategy. Let's quickly take a look at the instrument selection. The, the overall idea is that we only choose ETFs that have very high liquidity and stability. Uh, Mr. MCK in his, his video had picked the following ETFs, uh, which is a really good mix of diverse ETFs in the market. Starting with the Nifty Bs, uh, which, which are the top uh, 50 companies uh, in NSE. And then we have the Junior Bs, which is the next uh, top 50 companies. The mid-150 uh, ETF covers the following 150 companies by market cap. So these three ETFs put together captures the top 250 high-quality companies in the NSE. Right? And then we have the, the Sensex I ETF, which is, you know, just to throw into the mix, a uh, cover of Sensex uh, top 30 companies as well. And for commodity, we have gold and silver. And finally, for international exposure, we have the, the MON 100, which is nothing but your uh, Motilal Oswald, uh, the NASDAQ 100 universe. So this list beautifully covers a broad spectrum of, of quality ETFs diversified across markets, product types, and geographies. Let's now talk rules, and trust me, it couldn't be simpler than this. The, the entry rule is pretty straightforward. We are working only on the weekly candlestick time frame, right? So at the end of the, the week, after the market closes, say on Friday, for the ETFs that we have selected, we have to check the chart. If the weekly candle of the ETF is red, which means that the close is lower than the open for that particular week, and then we don't already have this particular ETF in our holding, we go ahead and buy one lot. If we already have this particular ETF in our holding, then we'll have to check if the price has fallen 3.14% from the last buy price. And if so, we just go ahead and buy one more lot. So this is basically the averaging down concept. Just so that the rules are really clear, all that we are doing is at the end of the week, after the Friday market is closed, for the ETFs that we've already selected, we check their weekly charts. And then if that particular ETF scandal for that particular week is red, meaning that you know the, the, the close is, is lower than the opening for that particular week, and then we check if we already have it in our holding. If we don't have it in our holding, we go ahead and buy one lot. In case we already have that particular ETF in our holding, an active trade already exists, then we check whether that, the current price for that particular week has fallen by more than 3.14% from the last buy. If that is the case, then we buy, go ahead and buy one more lot. And that's how we basically do an average down. 
The exit rule is very simple. When the ETF rises 3.14% from the buy price, we sell that position. So uh, in, in other words, the, the target percentage for our trade is going to be 3.14% as per the original strategy. And that's it. No RSI, no moving averages, no complex indicators, just clean price action logic. So here's where things get interesting. The original strategy from Mr. MCK only talks about the red candle. But I wanted to test and see what happens when we did this, just the reverse, right? Which is what if we buy uh, when we have a green candle? So, so we have two variations now, the bearish variation, which buys on red candles, which basically looks into the weakness, and then the bullish version, which buys on the green candles, which basically tests the strength. Both follow the exact same uh, exit logic, which is sell when the, the price rises to 3.14%. Now, you might expect that the bullish version to perform better since it follows the trend, right? But surprisingly, the bearish version marginally did better than the bullish version. Why? Because it buys the, the temporary discounts and sells on recoveries, right? The bullish version often enters after a move has already happened, uh, leaving very less room for an upside. This just reinforces the timeless truth. Markets reward those who buy fear and sell greed. Because no strategy is complete without proper money management plan. So I tested two allocation methods. Uh, the first one is the static allocation, where a flat 20,000 per trade and another 20,000 for each averaging position was used. Uh, again, the, these are all parameterized in the Python code. You can actually change to any amount that you want and backtest it the way you want. The second method, which is the divisor allocation, uh, here what we do is we divide the total portfolio by a chosen number, say 40 in this case, and then use that as your per trade size. There were a lot of questions around this divisor allocation method in the earlier videos. So let's take a closer look at uh, this particular aspect of it. Right? Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say that you start with an initial capital of what, 4 lakhs, and then your divisor is 40. So 4 lakhs divided by 40, that is 10,000 for each trade. So 10,000 for the first buy and 10,000 for your averaging down as well. Let's say after some time, your portfolio grows to 8 lakhs. This is because you're deploying all the profits back into the portfolio. Uh, then now 8 lakhs divided by your divisor 40, then your all allocation would now move to 20,000 each. So as you can see, as the portfolio grows, your position size also grows along with it. And this compounding effect gives an extra punch to the strategy performance over time. In the backtesting, I tried testing multiple variations of the target percentage position size approach. And I'll present to you uh, one of the best scenarios that I basically liked. So for this testing, I started with an initial capital of about 4 lakhs, added a flat 40 rupees brokerage fee uh, per round trip. And then I assumed zero slippage since ETFs are anyway highly liquid, right? I built a simple uh, Python screener, uh, which will basically take all these eight ETFs that we discussed. And then it will find out within among the eight, you know, which which of these ones have the, the red candle, the red weekly candle, and then gives you the, the ETFs that have a red candle here. For example, today it's uh, Sunday that I've basically run. And then these two uh, ETFs came up, which is the junior Bs and the mid 150Bs. These are the only two ETFs that have a red candle, weekly candle for this week. All others have green candle. So let's quickly jump into the, the chart and check if this is true. So for people who are new to uh, you know the charts and how to read it, uh, this is where we are. We are on TradingView software, and then like we uh, did, we have uh, two ETFs that are currently shown as using uh, as, as showing basically red uh, weekly candles here. So I've opened up the Junior Bs, which is one of those two, and then you can clearly see on the weekly time frame the last uh, you know the candle, which is for this week, is basically red, which means that it it opened up uh, the at, at a high price, and then when it closed, it closed low, right? And that's when a red candle is formed. So clearly, Junior Bs was fished out as one of the eligible candidates that we could buy. And what about the, the mid 150 Bs? That was the other ETF that was uh, fished out by the screener. And you can clearly see that the last candle is red as well, right? So we know that the screener really works. Just to be sure, uh, let's take a look at the one that did not come up in the screener. Let's say, for example, Nifty Bs. And that did not come up in the screener because the last candle is green here, right? Because it basically ended up higher. The close basically ended up higher than the open. And that's the reason why it did not come up. This is not one of the, the, the ETFs that we would be buying but we would be actually buying these two, right? The junior Bs and the, the mid 150 Bs. And this is the actual backtesting uh, you know, Python script uh, that I talked about. Uh, this was AI generated. And then I have a separate course on how to basically do this. Um, so, so in this case, uh, we, we are testing the, the homogeneous uh, you know, strategy here. And these are the eight ETFs that we already spoke about. And then the backtesting period is going to be close to about five years, starting from 2020, January 1st. So that basically covers the, you know, the, uh, the COVID period as well. We just wanted to check how this strategy would have done during that particular tip, right? And then uh, everything is parameterized, like I discussed. You can actually check uh, run for both variations, which is the bullish as well as the bearish. All you need to do is just change this parameter here, uh, depending upon which version that you want to test. And then you can set the initial capital. In this case, I've set it up to 4 lakhs. And then we discussed about the position sizing mode. Either you can go uh, static or you can go dynamic. Dynamic is nothing but your divisor, right? In case of static, these two inputs are important, which is you know how much amount you want to allocate per lot for the fresh buy and then the averaging buy, right? In this case, 20,000 for both, right? In case you choose uh, the dynamic here, in that particular case, you'll have to give what the, the dynamic divisor is going to be. Let's say 10 or 20 or 40 or whichever number that you want to give, you could actually give it here, right? And then as discussed, we are allocating uh, the brokerage of about 20 rupees per side 
which is round trip, it's going to be 40 rupees. And that's what typically zero the charges, right? Slippages, you're not considering any. The target percentage, as as, as far as the original uh, uh, you know strategy from MCK, he had uh, suggested 3.14. Uh, but based on my testing, what I found is you know a percentage of five percentage of uh, target basically gave you know the the, the, the kind of the you know, most optimal return. However, this code is available to you. You can run it as many times as you want in whatever combinations you want. And then if you find a better uh, you know a variation of the of the strategy that gives the most risk adjusted return, please post that uh, you know the the variations in in the comments so that the rest of the people can actually follow. And then the averaging down percentage, we have not changed it, which is 3.14. So the price has to fall, fall 3.14% from the last buy. And that's what the averaging percentage here. Right? And then finally, everything, uh, the, the trade book is, is stored as a CSV file. So you can actually look at every individual trade book uh, from that backtesting. If you have been following FabTrader, you're familiar with this one. We just don't stop at the, the backtesting itself. We also you know, analytically see how the performance is, compare all the variations, and then find out the, the best variation that gave the, the, the best risk adjusted return. And that's what this dashboard does. As part of the course, uh, you know, you'll, you'll also be taught how to build this particular dashboard uh, you know, from end to end. Right? So in this case, uh, we've tested two variations, right? the, the bearish and the, the bullish. Uh, this is how the, the bearish uh, you know, uh, performance looks like. Uh, I don't want to go through the, the numbers uh, and one by one, uh, typically because uh, for YouTube for some reason you know doesn't allow uh, you know percentages to be discussed. Uh, it basically flag flags that particular video uh, and then removes that video. So so this is this is where we are. You can take a quick look at it. I've already pasted, cut and pasted this as part of our blog article uh, where I've given all this information uh, you know for you to uh, to take a look at. Right. Uh, so so clearly the the brown part is the strategy and the white part is the Nifty 50. And then we can see that the strategy is doing uh, beating the you know, the benchmark, which is the Nifty 50 in this place. And then the average holding period is about 35 days, which is actually not not bad at all right remember again this is uh, the five percent target uh, you know uh, rate not the 3.14 target percent so kindly note that and then this is the overall net pnl after all the brokerage and everything is, is paid right uh, since the amount is invested in bits and pieces uh, CAGR doesn't make a lot of sense here the xirr makes a lot of sense so this is the the xirr that we got uh, out of the 547 trades in the last uh, about four years and eight months this infographic here basically gives you the monthly return heat map uh, across those uh, four or five years. And then uh, you'll also find the monthly returns for uh, for each month within that particular year, right? Uh, there is no drawdown here because we don't have any stop loss uh, for this strategy. So there's, there's no real, uh, you know, loss that we actually uh, incur. Uh, there could be, uh, you know, you'll have unrealized PNL, you know, go dipping uh, down. Uh, but that's something that we are not tracking we, since we don't have an SLV, we really don't uh, realize any, any loss as part of this uh, strategy, right? And this basically gives you a quick uh, year on year returns comparison between the strategy and the benchmark. And this infographic here talks about how your fund is utilized. Uh, in this case, we said that we're going to be, uh, you know, allocating four lakhs overall. And then you can clearly see that within, you know, the, the first two months, the entire four lakhs was, uh, you know, uh, deployed. And then that four lakhs basically remained uh, within the, the strategy throughout the period. And then while that remained, the, the you can see that the equity curve of the overall strategy, the overall portfolio basically going up. On a, on a nice smooth upward trend here, right? So that's that's really good. The entire trade book is available. Uh, I've downloaded the trade book and also the trade book along with this particular, uh, the ranking sheet, the you know the dashboard, um, the screener, the overall backtesting Python code. All of that is available uh, within the backtesting package, uh, for which you know you can find the link uh, to that in the video itself. So a quick comparison of how the bullish one did. Uh, this is the bullish one. I also managed to beat uh, you know the the Nifty 50 uh, by a slight margin here. I mean, you can you can maybe compare it the the net PNL here about 10% less than the the previous one. Uh, apart from that, you know the the bearish slightly did better than the bullish is what the final findings are. Uh, the rest of the the you know the uh, the numbers look very similar. Uh, it has taken less number of trades. The XIRR is uh, you know, obviously uh, less than the, the previous one. Uh, but however, the the rest of the numbers look very very similar, in, in including you know how the fund is utilized is also very similar. So again, this information is also available within our blog, and all this detail is available within the the backtesting package that's available for you as well. So net net uh, the the climax of the story is is that you know for the four years and eight months that we have tested uh, this is the final number that we've got gotten out of this strategy, which is pretty decent. And then it also has uh, ensured that it basically beats the benchmark, which is another plus. So overall, this strategy is something that I, I basically uh, personally like. And then uh, you know the next step would be that since this, this backtesting proves that this strategy does have an edge, I would now convert this into a fully automated algo and then deploy it as part of my algo system. By the way, if you're wondering how you can run similar backtests on your own strategies, uh, even if you have zero coding experience, I've built a complete course that teaches you exactly how to do it using Python and AI. It's completely beginner friendly and will help you not just to test, but also optimize and visualize your strategies just like the way I've done it here. Right? If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it uh, with your trading friends. It, it really helps the channel grow. And do check out our community website, fabreader.in. Uh, you might find a lot of similar useful stuff there. Right? So until next time, this is Vivek from Fabreader, wishing you profitable trades and peaceful wealth building. Thank you.